So today we're just going to do papers in shades of blue. I'm in the process of planning a collage that is actually a map of the area that I live in. And we have a lot of water, so I wanted to make papers that could be used in the area of the map that's indicating the water. And so I wanted to do different shades of blue, and I'm using everything from teal to phthalo blue to manganese blue to um, yeah, you name it, I got it. And I'm mixing it with titanium white and I'm printing on very thin rice paper and also some deli papers. So the very thin rice paper is one of the papers that I was um, playing with a couple weeks ago or last week when I was comparing rice papers. This is the one that I liked that does not tear, at least for me. So anyway, let's get started. So I'm going to use some of these stencils that I think kind of look like, you know, motion in, the, in water. And um, we're hopefully going to get some shapes that will, you know, kind of be reminiscent of water anyway. Um, this is an abstraction, remember, so. But anyway, these are all, these can all be found on my website uh, on, under the stencils and masks. So I'm going to start by creating backgrounds. So I'm just going to make papers that um, have, have a simple background and then we're going to use the stencils on top of that and layer a bit. So I'm, I'm putting, in this case, a little too much teal along with my titanium white. So I really am swimming in, in paint now, which is a little too much. And as I'm brayering off some of the paint, I'm loving the color that I'm getting over there. So, but that's copy paper. So I decided to pull out some of the rice paper so I can brayer onto the rice paper to get some, you know, some of that paint off. And maybe I can actually use some of the brayer sheets in the collage. I think it's very beautiful what's happening there. But as you can see, it's very thin rice paper. It, does, it doesn't want to behave. So back to the copy paper. Anyway, so I'm just going to print that. Now you can see how thin this rice paper is. It is very, very thin, almost transparent. And uh, I think it'll be very easy to work with when I'm doing the collage, but it's a little too thin. So I'm still in the market for a rice paper. I did buy the Yasutomo uh, 9 by 12 pack and oh boy, that, that rice paper is so thick and rough on the other side. It kind of hurts your hand after a while. I could see why people want to use a Baron, but um, yeah, I don't like it. It's, it's too thick. So I'm, I'm still in the market for a nice thin, but not too thin rice paper. I'm just going to keep looking. Anyway, I'm, now I'm being a little bit more careful with how much blue I put down. I'm just putting much more white and just a dot of blue and it's plenty. Now this one happens to be teal so I'm going to really have different shades. Some that are more on the warm side, some are more on the cool side. I want to have options. And I'm not waiting. This paper doesn't you can't wait two minutes to pick this up. If you wait two minutes, the paper tears. So it's very, very thin. It sucks up the paint very quickly. And um, so I, I found that I needed only about a minute. But the paper you're using, of course, might be different. Now see, it's even this paper, it like left some of the paint. You know, we got a little bit of it a tear on that side. So the collage that I'm going to be doing is only a 12 inch by 12 inch. I don't know why I'm making 
so many, but I, I think I want to have options. This is the first time I'm doing this, but I'm hoping to make a much larger one uh, in, the, in the future. I just want to, you know, the 12 by 12 is a test. And I've been wanting to do this for a long time, to work with maps. It's a, I think it's a perfect thing for collage. And it could be very abstract, and then if you, you know, live in the neighborhood, you kind of like get the idea that, oh my God, that's this neighborhood. Like, you, you kind of figure it out. But if to everybody else, it's just a, uh, an abstract. So I'm really hoping it works. And of course, I will want to do them large. I think, I think it would be fun to do the different places that I lived in my life. <laughs> And it's something that I could also offer as a commission. Okay, so we just have a couple more, one or one or two more of these backgrounds, and then we'll get to playing with stencils. And I, my original plan was to have a very light background and then put a darker color on top. But as you can see, some of my pages really came out too dark. So then I started thinking maybe I could just put white on top of it and sort of overlay it with a light color. So we're going to do a little bit of both and we're going to see how that works out. And it's tricky because if you make it too dark, then it's too contrasty. But, and that happened a couple of times here, but this page I think came out beautiful. It's like perfect level of contrast. And we still have a lot of paint in the background, so I'm gonna try picking it up with another one. And this one is super subtle, but it still has some beautiful areas. And I was going for subtle, so that's, you know. Now this paint is still wet. So I'm gonna try picking it up with um, deli paper. And you never know, I might wanna use the deli paper in these as well. And I've been lucky so far that almost all of the paint is coming up. We're not leaving too much on the, on the edges and the corners. Just that left-hand side, it's kind of bothering me. Anyway, this is a little bit darker. And it might be too, might be too dark, just a little bit too dark. I do find that once you're picking up on a sheet that already has paint on it, it, it picks up easier. Yeah, I think it's too much contrast, I don't know. So now we could put the ghost on another one. Oh, I decide that I'm just going to pick it up. So I don't usually try to mix paint on a over a ghost like that because it could just become a hot mess. But in this case, because we're going for subtle, 
I think it came out okay. But it's, it's not what I would recommend. And this one is really starting to bother me because it's just a little too contrasty. The second layer was a little too dark. And this one actually has some beautiful areas, so I'm not upset about it. So now I'm doing a very light white air layer. And I'm gonna go over that one that's been bothering me. And this is a smaller print now that is going, you know, smaller stencil that is going over the one that had bigger areas. So now we have the contrast of uh, the three shades of blue because the, the white is almost kind of like semi-transparent because I made it very thin. Now we have a beautiful ghost, so I'm gonna put that over this one. And this layering really starts to get beautiful. especially because the ghost has like these fine outlines. See how beautiful that is? So I think I'm back to making backgrounds. when the paint isn't completely mixed in like that. I like that variation of blue. So how do you feel about that? Do you, do you mix yours kind of in a sloppy way the way I do, just so you can get um, that kind of effect? Or do you want them to be completely like perfect color? I mean, I could probably mix it on a separate plate and then put it on after it's mixed, but, you know, I could also mix the paint into a uh, squeeze bottle. There's a lot of things that I could do to avoid that, but I actually like it. So as you can see, that was coming out kind of dark. So, so once again, I am using the rice paper to brayer off because I do think that that is going to give me some additional papers that will have like subtle color shifting in it. I don't know that I'm going to use them, at least not for this project maybe, but you never know. So again, I'm going to do a very light white, so I'm very light coat.
the nice thing about this very thin rice paper is it's very easy to, for me to line it back up almost in the same spot because I could clearly see, you know, where it ends. That's beautiful, but I'm going to make it even more beautiful. And that is a perfect ghost. So I'm going to put that over this one. These third layers are really in making big improvements on these prints. Look at how beautiful that is. So again, I'm doing the very thin coat of white to add a third layer. And now I'm going to put the ghost over this one. I didn't line up quite as good on this one. <laughs> I also, I love that. So on this next one, I'm Again, starting with a thin white layer, but I'm going to go over one of the brayer sheets with this. It's not complete. It's like that corner there that doesn't have any paint, but that's okay because for collage, I only need certain parts. I don't need the full sheet. I probably need a third layer on that. And that I'm going to put on this one, this background. This was one of the darker backgrounds. Beautiful. So I think both of those need something. Just put a dot of teal. Goes a long way. Oh yeah, and that has both a cool blue and a warm blue. There's a lot of cool stuff going on inside this one. That'll be beautiful. So here are my gorgeous papers. I'm very happy with all of them. Some of them are more subtle than others, and that's fine. We have deli papers as well. I should be able to use them somewhere. Maybe not on this project, I don't know. Let's see how I feel when I'm working on it.
that was probably my least favorite, but I still like it. There's certain areas of it are absolutely beautiful. The ones with the, um, the fine ghost, I love. I think it really says water to me. It's beautiful. That one is also so gorgeous. And this one. And again, ghost with the fine edges. And these with the spiral, I, I'm not even sure I want to cut them up. They're so beautiful. And this, I think, was the last one, and it was pretty nice. And then we have, you know, all sorts of deli papers and brayer off sheets and all that kind of stuff. So we've got a lot of bonus papers on this project. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.